So today we're going to um, start with the topic one. Uh, topic one for strategic management accounting. <clears throat> uh, for this topic, uh, we're going to cover six different learning outcomes. But before we start topic one, I would like to give a quick glance over the uh, exam guide, which means information about your final exams, the, the, uh, the time durations, the, the topics, how many types of questions, or how many questions. So let's start with the uh, exam guide. <clears throat> Your final exam uh, will be open book exam. All right, so you are allowed to bring uh, written material with you. But for this open book, there is a one conditions that you cannot bring whatever material you like, such as textbook. You are not allowed to bring textbook. So I'm going to write something that you are allowed to bring as a written material with you in your final exam. Right. So you are allowed to bring a written material with size of A4 and two pages, all right? So two pages, double-sided, or single-sided, four pages, size of page is an A4, all right? But make sure you're not writing too tiny, so you do not try to squeeze much information in that uh, four or two pages of A4 size, all right? Your exam's duration will be two hours, all right? And in the beginning of exams, you have 20 minutes. In these 20 minutes, you are not allowed to write anything, all right? You just have a look at your question paper, make your mind for the questions, that which question you want to type it first, all right? And once 20 minutes are finished, then your time for two hours will start. All right, so total two hours and 20 minutes, but again, you are not allowed to write anything in this uh, 20 minutes, right? <clears throat> Discussion based, right? So now you have uh, four questions. You can attempt any three, either two one or two one. All right. <clears throat> so now let's talk more about which types of questions you're gonna have in these two calculations and the two 
uh, discussion based. All right. In these calculations, you have uh, two questions. First questions will be out from topic standard costing. and variance analysis. Right. Standard costing, variance analysis. All right. And second questions will be from another topic which is relevant cost. relevant cost and relevant revenue, all right? So these two topics for your calculations. Keep in your mind that these two questions is not 100% calculation based. Of course, you will have some portion about discussion based. For example, in this standard costing and values analysis, examiners, of course, ask you calculation about standard costing and variance. Besides that, in these questions, examiner can also ask you about the possible causes of different uh, variances, like a certain price variance, possible causes of corrective actions. Right? So that's going to be a discussion based, means uh, more, more theoretical questions, not just 100% calculation. Same thing here, not 100% calculations. You're going to have some discussion based questions in this question as well. All right? Next is a uh, discussion based. <clears throat> In this discussion based, what questions will be out from working capital? So in this working capitals, examiner can ask the elements of working capital. Elements of working capital. <clears throat> and second things could be uh, efficient control of these elements. Efficient control of these working capital elements. So one question will be come from this topic, all right, with, with two parts. And second one is a uh, transfer pricing. transfer pricing. So there are five methods of transfer pricing which are given in your chapter 13 of textbook column delivery. Right? In this chapter you have five different methods related to transfer pricing. However, in these five methods you are allowed to choose any two. All right, any two out of five, whichever two you like it, you are allowed to explain. It. All right, keep in your mind this is your chapter 13, the methods given in your chapter 13. All right, so that's the four main topic you have to focus in these modules that are going to be. Uh, examine in your exam, All right? So later on next week or following week, if you have any questions regarding your exam style, please feel free to uh, ask me a question in the class. All right. So now let's um, start with the uh, topic one. As I said, that 
in topic one, you're gonna have uh, six different learning outcomes. All right, so let's start with the first learning outcome. So I repeat, this is topic one, quality ready textbook, lesson one, the chapter one, all right? And the topic is introductions to management accounting, all right? So let's start with the with the basic ideas of the accounting. You already studied what is accounting in your BTEC H and D program, right? So accounting means record the information, measuring the information, and communicate that information among users all right so you also studied in your financial accounting and management accounting there are two types of users internal and external so we will also speak about this internal and external users here but of course we're not going to study in very detail since you already studied uh, previously all right so you know accounting right we do accounting for the users because users they need accounting information in order to make various decisions right now types of accounting there are two types of accounting financial accounting and management accounting Financial accounting and management accounting. Now, what is financial accounting? Financial accounting helps us to provide information to the external users. Whereas management accounting help us to provide information to the internal users. All right. So who are the external users that you also studied in your previous subject? It's involved such as shareholders. Right. It's involved banks who lend money to the company involve suppliers customers and government or policy makers or regulators So these kinds of people, they need financial information and financial accounting help us help them to get information or financial information about the company, all right? Management account, accounting provide information to the internal users. Who are the internal users involve managers who manage the organizations make important decisions, make strategies, so on. And also, uh, <clears throat> labor, workers, all right? So they need company uh, internal information to achieve their objectives, whatever budget company has assigned them in order to, to, to to, to, to achieve that budget, they need some financial information. Through the management accounting, they receive that information. Right? And of course, there is a difference between financial accounting and management accounting as well. All right? However, we will not speak here the difference between financial accounting and uh, management accounting because you already studied in your previous uh, subject. All right. So 
since it's a strategic management accounting and of course we focus more on management accounting all right so let's move on to our second learning outcome which is decision making process So there are six steps in this decision making process. With the help of this decision making process, the company able to achieve its objective. All right? So there are six steps. So let's start with the first step. The first step is Identify the objective. Right. In order to achieve the objective, first of all, of course, company need to find its objective. What company want to achieve? Different company have different kinds of objective. Here we are talking about profit making organization. So of course, for the profit making organization, the objective is to maximize the profit or profit maximizations all right but of course profit maximization is not always the objective of the company that company want to achieve it but of course this is the objective for almost every organization but some organizations beside maximizing the profit they want to to, to build their reputations in the markets they want to maximize the quality of the product they want to um, to maximize the delivery of the high technology among the customers, all right? So, no matter what is the objective, but the important is you have to identify your objective first, all right? So once we identify the objective, so let's say, let me write here, so profit maximizations. Right? So that's the objective of the company. Right? So once we identify the objective, then company make efforts to identify the course of actions. In simple words, what options we have available to achieve our objective. So Identify the course of action. So, in simple words, the options that we have available to to achieve the objective, which is profit maximization. So, what options we could have to maximize the profit? Options could be deliver the high quality of the product, so customer will be will be demand for that product. Your revenue increase. Finally, it will give positive impact to the profit or minimize the sales, oh sorry, minimize the cost, right? Maximize the number of units, right? Maximize the market shares. So we have different kinds of options that the company can choose it to achieve this objective, right? So once we identify the course of actions, various options, now it's time to evaluate which option is the best in order to achieve the objective, all right? Evaluation of each available options. Evaluate the course of action. So how are we gonna evaluate things? We have two or two different options available. How are we gonna understand which option is good or which option is bad? All right. So 
very simple criteria to choose any kinds of um, option is to look at the advantages and disadvantages. So on the basis of the advantages and disadvantages of each and every single options, we will evaluate. And of course, the options which has a low disadvantage and high advantages, we will select that options and implement these options in our budget in order to achieve the objective. Right? So that is our next step, which is implementation. Right? How are we going to implement it? We are going to implement in form of budgets. So that budget could be short term or the long term. Right. So we will apply these options in our budgeting process, short term or long term, and then we will see whether this budget can help us to achieve objective or not. Right. <clears throat> Once we implemented that option. And of course, after implement that options to maximize budget, we're gonna get some results, all right? We're gonna get some outcomes. So what we're gonna do here, whatever outcomes we have, we're gonna compare these outcomes with the budget, with the objective that we have determined. compare actual results with the budgeted results. Now what is actual results? Actual results is the results that we actually achieve our outcomes. Right? And budgeted results that we wanted to achieve. So we are going to compare these two kinds of informations and then we see whether we achieve our objective or not. If your actual results match with budgeted results, that means of course you achieve your budget, you achieve your objective and whatever options we have selected, that option is successful. If it's not, then we have to go through with the process again, step by step, with the other options, because the previous option wasn't successful to achieve the objective, all right? So what is the last step? So that is the last step, divergences of plan, which means we divert from our plan that we wanted to achieve or not. And of course, as I said that, if your actual results match the budgeted results, that means of course you achieve your objective, so we move on, we, we try to uh, improve our performance or maintain the performance. So we will achieve next objective, whatever is the objective. But if your actual results and budgeted results are not same, means there is a negative difference between 
actual results and the budgetary results. That means whatever options we have selected, that does not help us to achieve objective. We will choose another option. We will go back to this step. If no, means if we do not achieve our objective, we will go back to step two and choose another options and then we will we will keep repeating this process until we achieve our objective all right so this is decision making process keep in your mind step 1 2 4 step 1 2 4 here Step one to four is a planning process. All right. This is planning process. Step one to four. And step five to six is a Controlling process. So, planning and controlling is decision making. So, this is your learning outcome two. Right. Now, we move on to learning outcome three. So learning outcome two, uh, three is the We know that because of globalizations or maybe deregulations or technology or customer orientations, because of the different reasons, the, the environments of the business is keep changing. As a result, company operating activities also change. Consequently, that different operating activity of the company give impact over the management accounting system of the organizations, all right? So in this learning outcome, we gonna look at the various factors that give impact, of course, positive impact over the organization environments. So in that particular situations, organization need a various kind of information. Management accounting help organizations to get all that kind of information that company needed in order to adopt in new business environments. All right. So let's start with the first. <clears throat> first is a. globalization All right. you know that what is globalization which means selling product in international markets that's called the globalization you know that because of globalizations various companies they are entering in the other country so let's say in Vietnam due to globalization many foreign companies foreign investors they are entering in Vietnam markets so, which means the competitions in the local markets is increasing day by day because they have to face a world-class people, 
means high quality products, high quality services, right? So in that case, these local market people or local business, they need a much more detailed information from the company so, so they can make their products better than the foreign products, all right? So who helped them? Of course, management accounting provides them more detailed information that they need it, such as the information about cost. So how they can minimize the cost of the product, so that's why they can attract more and more customer instead of the, instead of the customer buying the uh, uh, foreign products. Right? So they require information. Of course, management accounting provides information to the, to the uh, local people, local markets, or local vendors. Right? <clears throat> Next is the growth in service sectors. Right? US and UK are the country in which only service sector contribution is more than 70% in the country's GDP. So which means we can see that service sector is playing very important role in order to grow the companies and the country. All right. Uh, <clears throat> however, this is this wasn't the always case when the service sector was involved or play a very important role in the country GDP. Before privatizations, when there, there, when there was a government organization, service sector wasn't so developed. But since privatizations entered in the, in, in the markets, then service sector aware, I mean, they much more concerned to maximize the quality of their, their, their services. So they are much more involved in order to understand that how we can minimize the cost of the services so we can maximize the profitability or we can maximize the world, world class uh, quality services to the customers. All right? So means all that information that service sector needed from organizations in order to provide the high quality service to the, to the, to the markets. Next is the um, period of product life cycle. Compared to the past, the product life cycle is getting shorter and shorter. Product life cycles, you know that it started from, from the R&Ds until the product, uh, product diminution, right? This period is getting shorter and shorter, and that's company wanted. One company do not want to maximize the product, the, the, the life cycle of its product. Why? Because if it's taking too much time to introduce a new product, or is waiting to finish the life of the previous product, of course, many competitors will take over that company. All right? No matter how good company you are, no matter how much market share you have in the markets, no matter how much demand right now you have in the markets, if you do not introduce a new or better technology product soon in the markets, maybe customer will forget you. All right? So, and in order to reduce the product life cycle, you have to, of course, introduce a new product before, before the previous product is finished. So you need, you need a certain kind of information that, that help you to introduce a new product in the markets, and that certain information, we can get it through the management account. Right? <clears throat>
Next is advance in manufacturing technology. Nowadays, compared to the previous manufacturing system, nowadays organizations are implementing the new strategies, all right, manufacturing companies, in order to provide the better, better technologies or more innovative product to the organization. Like as we can take example of uh, Nokia's and the Apple. Nokia used to be the number one company in the world in, in the past. However, now compared to Apple, the market share of Nokia. Is, is Nokia smartphone is really, 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 really slow and very, very small, right? So why it happened? Because Apple introduced a new technologies in the markets and of course attract uh, millions or billions of customers in the world, right? So manufacturing technologies play a very important role. One of the examples I want to talk about is the uh, GIT, just in time. It's an inventory management system. Most of organizations, they are implementing a just-in-time technique, which we also call it um, a pull techniques. Means when you need it, then we order raw material. Otherwise, we do not need. So in that in that in, in that particular system, we can save our our, our storing cost. Right? We don't have to pay for rent. We don't have to pay for rotation cost. We don't have to pay for the inventory maintenance cost and so on. So as a result, our, our, our cost is reduced. So that's kind of new technologies that manufacturing organizations are implementing to help organizations to achieve this objective much more faster right? and make much more profitable compared to the other techniques that that some organization they used to apply before. Next is a <coughs> IT. Impact of IT. Uh, IT, of course, play a very important role in every kind of business. Uh, the best example of IT is an e-commerce or internet commerce uh, business. No matter what business we have, the IT is much more involved in that business, such as, let's say, take example of online booking, either movie tickets or, or airline tickets. Right? So such kinds of technologies that organizations are using in their business can help organizations to minimize the cost right, and maximize the revenue of the organization. So as a result, ID plays a very important role right, in, in, in our changing business environments. And the last is our <coughs> customer orientation. Customer <coughs> orientation. Uh, it's for each and every organization, no matter what, what is your objective. It's really important for every organization to satisfy its customers, to meet the requirements of the customers. So in order to understand this customer orientation, we gonna study learning outcome four. With the help of learning outcome four, you will understand that how customer orientation is important for the organizations. All right. So let me write down here four. All right. <clears throat> so now move on to learning outcome four. So customer satisfaction. So what we call it? What are the outcome? Yes, customer satisfaction. And customer orientation. <clears throat> so 
So it's important for organizations to to I would say on time delivery. On time delivery. It's really important for companies to deliver product to the customers on time. So if you are not providing product to the customer on time, then of course your product is not valuable to that customer because if you are delivering after a particular time, that means customers do not need that product. In order to satisfy the customer, in order to maximize the demand of the product, so one important thing is a on time delivery. Many organizations, even though they give promise uh, to the customer to deliver product on time or before time, like as a pizza companies, such as the Domino Pizza. All right. So now normally what happens with the pizza's company, if they are not delivering your, your product, let's say in 20 minutes, if, the, if you will receive your pizza after 20 minutes, company have to give free pizzas to the customers. So as a result, the product is not at profitable for the company at all, even though company is in the loss. Right. So on time delivery play a very essential role. Next one is the quality. Quality of the products. All right. So company try to maximize the process which help companies to maximize its quality. So company adopt different kinds of approaches. And one of the core approach to maximize the quality of the product is a TQM. Stands for Total Quality Management. So which means get it right things at first time. Means uh, you don't have to uh, waste money second time in order to to to, to fix the product. Like as I can give example of your BTEC HND program. In your BTEC HND program, you normally submit your assignments. If you are submitting your assignment first time, and your assignment has a problem, second time you have to pay money for your redo, and you have to spend time to, to fix that assignments. So that's why if you apply TQM, which means you, you, you do your assignments in the right way, follow all the guidelines, meet the, all the requirements, answer all the questions, that means second time you don't have to spend your time and money. So it means you are saving your time and money. All right. So that is the total quality management techniques that nowadays most of organizations they are they are adopting to maximize the, the quality or customer satisfaction. Next one is continuous improvement. Continuous improvement. So, that's continuous imp improvement is adopted from Kaizen technique, which is a Japanese word, which of course means a continuous improvement. No matter how good your product is right now, every time company make efforts to make it better. Alright, so let's say we get the example of iPhone, iPhone 4, iPhone 5, iPhone 6, 7, 8, X, so on. Right. So, which means every time company introduces new product with the better features, or new product which, uh, which may overcome the problem of the previous products. Alright, so that's the example of the continuous improvement. And of course, Continuous improvement uh, try to give more confidence to the companies to be assured about the new product. So as a result, that techniques attract more and more customers. Right. So that's all about your learning outcome four. Now we move on to learning outcome five. <clears throat>
So learning outcome five is about management, accounting. and athletes, right? <clears throat> As we know that uh, besides profitability, company also focus on some other things that are really important for the company, which is CSR, stands for corporate social responsibilities, and the ethical behavior of the company towards the markets, towards the users, all right? So here, we're gonna speak about what kind of uh, behavior company should have when, com when, when company is, is, uh, is dealing with the, with, with the users or whatever employees who are working in the organization. So for this ethical behavior, we're gonna have uh, four different kind of uh, principles. All right. So, in order to maintain the ethics, uh, we have to follow those principles. Or management accounting, or accounting must follow that uh, principles. All right. <clears throat> so, what this involves? First one is integrity. Integrity means honesty. Be honest. All right. Do not cheat with others, or do not cheat with yourself. Whatever responsibilities company has assigned you, they should be followed in, 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 in the right way or we do it correctly, all right? Second one is the objectivity. Objectivity means don't be biased, all right? Treat people fairly, equally. Of course, your work, do not try to be personalized with the customers, with the outsiders, all right? So be, I mean, I mean, treat everybody equal. Do not give some kinds of personal favor to someone, all right? Next one is a confidentiality. Confidential, this means keep information secrets. Keep information confidential. Do not disclose any kinds of important information to someone who is not really liable to get that information. All right? So do not disclose any kinds of secrets, formulas, designs, or any other kinds of things, which is normally bad for the organizations. All right? So, so don't do that. So this is called keep information secrets. And the last one is the professionalism. All right? Professionalism. So it means behave professionally. It means follow all kinds of laws, rules, regulations, code, conduct policies, principles. We have to follow or do not try to break any kinds of uh, for law or any kinds of rules and regulations around the company, right? So these are the um, <clears throat> uh, ethics principles or behavior of the people in the organization must be that, all right? In, in, in following that kinds of uh, requirements, right? To behave ethically. Now move on to the uh, last learning outcome <clears throat> which is functions of management accounting right of management accounting. So here we speak about three different functions. The first one is a cost allocation.
cost allocation between cost of goods sold and inventory. All right. So, what does it mean, cost of goods sold? Uh, cost of goods sold is the information that help us to estimate profit. However, inventory do not involve in any kinds of profit estimations. All right, so inventory, any kinds of stocks which is company have left. So of course, that's part of the company uh, assets or balance sheet. However, these two kinds of informations have informations about stocks. All right, stocks that company sold it. All right, and the stock unsold it. All right. So keep in your mind that when we are estimating the cost, we not gonna okay. Let me write down for you. Uh, sales minus cost is profit or sales minus cost of goods sold let's say cost of goods sold is a gross profit right cost of goods sold mainly combination of three things you know that material labor and overheads all right <clears throat> for example I produce five products right I produce five products and I sold three products when I am calculating my cost of goods sold in my cost of goods sold I will not write down the cost of five products I will write down the cost of three products. Why? Because of matching principles. I hope you study that principle in your in your um, in your B Tech All right. <clears throat> so, which means this three dollars will be here, cost of goods sold. All right, and two dollars left. That will be part of my inventory. So these kinds of allocation, it's called cost allocation. That's the difference between, that's the meaning of cost allocations between cost of goods sold and the inventory, which is really important. That's the main job of the, of the uh, management account, right? Next. So provides accurate or relevant information for decision making. All right. Now, what does it mean? Let's 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 take example of the market segmentations. So, which means uh, when the company is not only producing one kind of product, company is producing various kinds of product. We also call it product mix, such as. Uh, Apple company. Mm. Not Apple, so let's take example of another company, let's say Wing Group companies, right? Wing Group in Vietnam, they are producing the different kinds of products, product mix. When company is producing different kinds of products, 
and of course company need information about the inventory of different kinds of products so that's kind of information company easily can get it through the uh, through the management academy the management academy help companies to to do that so let let, let me give you another example the example about uh, scale resources scale resources scale resources means we know that company has a limited option i mean limited uh, resources so if, if company has a limited resources company has to make a decision that which product we should produce first because our resources are the limited right? let's say uh, scale resources means um, machine uh, uh, hours per day how many hours machine can run in a day let's say machine can run maximum 100 hours in a day so company has to make a decision that uh, which products we have to produce first because 100 hours are the limited 100 machine hours are the scale resources. So company needs some kind of certain information to make a decision that which kinds of product we should produce first, such as we can calculate the product profitability. On the basis of pro profitabilities, we can give the ranks to the product. All right? And on the basis of ranking, we make a decision, this product produce first, then apply uh, all kinds of machine hours. If some machine hours left, then we produce product second. After second, if something left, then we will uh, product three. So that's kind of information we can get it through the management account. All right. The last one is the performance measure. measurement how we can measure the performance as I explained you in the second learning outcome in order to measure the performance what we do we compare with two informations what we want to achieve what we actually achieve let's say you want to know the you want to know your performance in the last semester Right? How you understand your performance in the last semester? You will compare your final results with the objective that you set it in the first day of your last semester. Let's say first day of your last semester, you want you to get 90% marks in your studies. Right? You sit for exams throughout the semester, and at the end of the semester, you get the results, and your results is let's say 70%. So what does it mean? Your performance is not as you expected. Means you have your performance, or your performance is low, right? So that's basically, that's the meaning of the performance measurement, and that's the way to measure the performance. Company does exactly the same thing by comparing what company won and what com comparing company actually achieved. So we also call it variance analysis. We're gonna study later in this uh, module values analysis right measuring measuring the performance right after measuring the performance we do the management by exception management by exception which means you find out what are the reasons that your performance is not good or your performance is good so this is called possible causes so once we have the possible causes, then we find the corrective actions. Means how we can solve these problems, of course, in future, because previous semester results already out. You cannot make any changes in your previous semester results. But 
you can know your weaknesses, you can know the reasons that why your result is low for the next semester, of course, you can maximize your performance. If your results was good, if you achieve budget, achieve your objective in the previous semester, still you need a possible causes. Why? In order to maintain the performance, in order to know what are the reasons that why I achieve my budget, why I achieve my objective. That's called a performance measurement values or the management account section. So these are the mainly functions of the management account. Right. So that's all about your topic one. Right. So I repeat again, in this topic one, we study uh, six different learning outcomes. All right. In first learning outcome, we quickly have a look what is the difference between financial accounting and management accounting users. In second learning outcome, we study decision making process with six different uh, steps. But this decision making process is a combination of planning process and the controlling process. Step one to four is the planning, five and six is a controlling. Uh, third learning outcome, the impact of changing business environments on um, of management accounting, we study the six different kinds of factors that they may give impact, right, due to the business environment changing. Next one is the uh, customer satisfaction, study the three different kinds of uh, uh, factors that may affect the customer satisfaction. They, 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 that play really important roles to attract the customer or satisfy the customers, right? And um, step five is about management accounting and the uh, ethics. So we study the four different principles uh, of which company people they must follow, organization must follow. Right. And step uh, learning outcome six is about function of management accounting that we just finished. Two different function cost allocations, provide accurate information, and the performance uh, measurements. Right. So that's all about uh, topic one. If you have any questions regarding topic one, you can send me an email here. So when you send email, so make sure the email title must be University of Sanai. All right. So that must be your email title so I can understand uh, you from the University of Sanai. All right. So that's all for topic one. Uh, send me an email if you have any questions. I hope uh, next week uh, school will be open. And uh, I'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you.